the story about the Apollo 11 astronauts giving a fake moon rock to former Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Willem Drace, overlooks one important fact. That is, that the astronauts did not hand out any lunar samples on their goodwill tour in October 1969. The only moon rock not at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory or in the hands of the primary investigators at that time was on display at the Smithsonian. Nixon didn't request the construction of the Apollo 11 gift displays containing the lunar material and flags that flew to the moon until November 1969, after the Goodwill tour had ended. The Apollo 11 lunar display intended for the Netherlands was given to their official head of state, Queen Juliana, no earlier than January 1970. She then donated the prized gift to the Boerhaven Museum in Leiden on February 2, 1970, where, in 2009, it was pulled out of storage and put on display to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Apollo 11. The inscription on the gift display presented to the Netherlands says, Presented to the people of the Netherlands by Richard Nixon, President of the United States of America. This flag of your nation was carried to the moon and back by Apollo 11, and this fragment of the moon's surface was brought to Earth by the crew of that first manned lunar landing. All 250 displays have a similar inscription, with different recipients' names, of course. So, if this is the lunar sample that was officially given to the Netherlands, then where did the Drace Rock come from? Well, let's take a closer look at what we actually know and see if anything makes sense. First, Consider that the Drace Rock, weighing in at 89 grams, is about twice as massive as all 250 gifted lunar samples from Apollo 11 combined. The Nixon administration had to literally pull teeth to get the 50 grams of lunar material for the displays because Elbert King at NASA only wanted to put the lunar samples into the hands of real scientists for scientific investigation. As Arna Wielders noted, why would NASA literally throw away one of their first and few moon rocks? something that had immeasurable scientific value. Consider what we can confirm was actually gifted to 135 nations, including the Netherlands. All these nations received nearly identical gift displays. They all had a lucite disk containing a lunar sample. They all have a flag of their nation that was flown to the moon. And they all have an inscription saying, A, they contain lunar material, and B, they were given to the people of the receiving entity from President Nixon. In other words, the inscription identifies the item gifted, the benefactor, and the recipient. These were gifts from one head of state to another. The card now associated with the Drace Rock says it's from Meddendorf, but it doesn't mention anything about a rock, let alone a moon rock. It doesn't even mention the recipient by name. It's a generic souvenir card that simply advertises the benefactor and the venue. It's basically an advertisement. Originally, it could have just as easily been associated with an autographed picture of the Apollo 11 mission, which the U.S. Diplomatic Corps handed out to even lesser dignitaries, like Drace, during and after the Goodwill Tour. Consider that NASA protected both the Apollo 11 lunar samples and the Apollo 17 Goodwill rocks by encapsulating them in lucite to protect them from the environment. Why would NASA be so careless as to let the Drace rock slip out of their hands without dipping it in lucite? or even enclosing it in a glass nitrogen bell. Consider that the Apollo 11 astronauts were only in Amsterdam for a few hours on October 9, 1969. All the while, they were busy shaking hands and meeting with dignitaries. Practically every move they made was scrutinized by cameras. If their presentation of a replica of a plaque and goodwill message desk to Queen Juliana was recorded, then why didn't the presentation of a moon rock to Drace draw equal attention? Why didn't the astronauts present the rock to Drace themselves? The only way I can think to explain this is that perhaps the astronauts were unable to meet up with Drace during their visit, because the then former Prime Minister was busy doing something more important than meeting with the only two men on Earth who had ever walked on the moon, and receiving the one and only moon rock that the astronauts handed out on their tour. How else would Middendorf end up with a rock to pass on to Drace later that same day back at the RAI Congress Center? Luckily, Middendorf just happened to have a mass-produced card already typeset and printed to give with the rock because the astronauts forgot to bring one with them. And why was it more important to mention on the card where and when the gift was given than what was given and to whom? You also have to wonder why the astronauts would give Queen Juliana 
the true head of state relatively cheap trinkets, then totally ignore the then current Prime Minister Pete de Young, and then hand Ambassador Middendorf a relatively huge, invaluable rock to pass on as a private gift to a then former Prime Minister like Willem Drace. Did Drace win a lottery or something? Perhaps the astronauts were afraid that if they gave the rock directly to Drace publicly, they would hurt Queen Juliana's feelings. But how would the astronauts expect Queen Juliana not to find out about their gift to Drace? Did they try to keep it a secret? If not, it must have been a major insult when a button containing a few specks of moon dust showed up in Queen Juliana's mail a couple of months later. And when Middendorf brought a real moon rock to the palace at a private reception for select guests and the press in January 1970, why didn't they invite Drace to bring his much larger rock over so they could compare the two? Could this real moon rock have been the little piece of stone that Middendorf remembered receiving from the State Department, not the astronauts, which Drace was so interested in? And the most curious facet of this whole Drace rock story is that of all the people in the world to present this special gift to, why Drace? Where's the quid pro quo? The tit for tat? What could NASA possibly expect in return? Of what importance was Willem Drace to the United States or to NASA at that time? I can think of dozens of world leaders that the U.S. would have been better off trying to influence by giving them a chunk of the moon than one of the seven then-living retired prime ministers of the Netherlands. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Consider that the Drace rock was first assumed to be a moon rock by Drace's heirs. They are the ones who first connected the rock to the card. If the rock was a gift to Drace from Middendorf, it's totally plausible that the rock was a joke between the two. Especially when you consider the irony of Middendorf knowingly giving a chunk of petrified wood from Barry Goldwater's home state to a former prime minister of a country that most of the world nostalgically associates with wooden shoes. The boys at NASA would have known that a chunk of lava from Hawaii looks more like a moon rock than a piece of petrified wood from Arizona. Consider motive. Why would NASA try to pass off a piece of petrified wood as one of their lunar samples? Why would NASA, or the Apollo 11 astronauts for that matter, attempt to pull a fast one over on an elderly retired statesman from the Netherlands? Also, consider that the Drace rock obviously did not come from NASA's collection, because it doesn't resemble anything the Apollo 11 astronauts brought back with them from the moon. A record was made of every lunar sample during the preliminary examination stage. Each sample was photographed, weighed, and measured. Nothing resembling the Drace rock is in the Apollo 11 sample catalog or the lunar sample compendium. The Drace rock is closest in weight to sample 10022, a basalt rock. The Drace rock is quartz, and there are no quartz stones listed among the Apollo 11 samples. There were 19 basalts, 30 breaches, and a one-pound gabbro but no quartz. So, how do we explain all this? How do we explain the astronauts supposedly slipping a fake moon rock to Middendorf when Middendorf remembers receiving a real moon rock from the State Department? How do we explain the press taking such interest in the astronauts giving a bucket full of relatively cheap gifts to Her Royal Highness Queen Juliana and to lesser dignitaries such as Evo Simcalden, mayor of Amsterdam, and yet, the presentation of a moon rock to an elderly retired statesman totally escaped the public eye. And how do we explain the fact that nothing resembling the 89-gram Drace rock was cataloged by the Lunar Receiving Laboratory, and as many as 135 major world leaders received only about a fifth of a gram of moon dust? Once you examine the facts, the Drace moon rock story becomes rather hard to believe doesn't it? Chow Moon Hoax Conspirators, wherever you are.